Day 39 of 39 here at Gulfstream Park West on a partly sunny Saturday afternoon, November the 28th. Curtain comes down. This is the uh, last call, final call, with a 10-race card forthcoming over the next few hours here in Miami Gardens with that live shot at about 11.45 a.m. from the quarter pole tower with the main track and the turf course, both of which will see heavy action throughout the afternoon as Jason Blewett and Ron Nicoletti welcome all of you. And it's great to have your company, everybody, on this getaway day here at Gulfstream Park West. We've got good weather, Ronnie, no rain, and a lot of Shkato will be up for grabs in that guaranteed Rainbow Six cash out. Well, ma mandatory payouts and everything today, and we've had a couple of uh, long price horses come in in those sequences, so uh, make sure you're ready to go, and uh, uh, we were trying to guess, we're probably going to have a couple of million dollars, I have no idea how to guess it, I'm usually wrong, <laughs> but I'm thinking there might be a couple of million dollars in that Rainbow Six pool, if not more. Yeah, two million seems like a good over-under, and we'll, uh, being the optimistic uh, bunch that we are, we'll take the over on two mil, and uh, good luck if you're playing, that gets underway in race number five this afternoon and there are some bulky fields throughout the sequence meanwhile we saw some good prices in fact score in yesterday's stronic five so much so for a buck it paid just under 70 g's and i'm um, glad my horse did win the ninth race here at 1380 uh, got bet a lot in that race in henry's world but i mean from start to finish ronnie if you were both good and lucky maybe you hit this thing for a big big score i mean just looking at the prices you sort of just had to figure out that horse at laurel uh, that was uh, you know 44 dollars, but that's a nice score for almost seventy thousand uh, dollars and i think there were seven winning tickets so uh, we had that carryover going in and they bet almost for four, over $400,000 into the Stronic 5 pool. And we'll do it again this coming Friday. So that'll be December the 4th. And the one, of course, glaring change with that, we will have Gulfstream Park in the mix with the primetime championship season, the winter meet, getting underway this coming Wednesday, December the 2nd. That's a 10-race card, and we'll keep the regular start time, or at least the current start time, of 12.35, 12.40 Eastern uh, once we get back over to Howlandale uh, Beach. But uh, you and I, Ronnie, working on that opening day program as we speak. Uh, again, some chunky-sized fields, and that'll, I mean, take us right in to the opening weekend uh, races, of course, anchored very much by next Saturday's nine stake full claiming crown, which is always an awesome day. Yeah, awesome day. And you t you want big fields? That's the day you <laughs> you bet the claiming crown a day is incredible. And we got a, a lot of really nice uh, entries into those races. One of that entries, nominations into those races. So, uh, you know, it's going to be a fun day. Definitely. And we've got a little bit of a barn burner in terms of the race for leading jockey and trainer. Now, I say that knowing full well at this stage of the game, you've got both Rohan Crichton and Edgar Zayas in their respective categories. They both got a, a pretty comfortable lead, but sizing up who's gonna be in town, the first major out of town jockey on Wednesday at Gulfstream for day one will be Louis Saez, and he will, with the exception of Sammy Camacho, uh, Louis will be riding on a regular basis against the top four guys on that list from Edgar, who does have a, what, uh, two win lead over Miguel, who's not riding until opening day at Gulfstream. Three wins over Misael. But we've been treated, Ronnie, to this meet, even with all the rain that we've had, we've been treated to really some outstanding riding by everybody on that list. Yeah, you know, we've uh, had an uh, interesting meet with dodging raindrops throughout. We had a lot of r races that were run on uh, seal sloppy tracks, uh, but that uh, is not the case today. So these got riders were very, very good in all situations. So uh, we'll see if Edgar, he got the summer meet across that. Does he get another one here? Yep, I'd say he's an odds-on favorite to do so. Does a Misael get off to a big run today? Then you've got a three-win lead currently for Rohan Crichton. 19-16 against Safi with Antonio sitting third right now. Tied, in fact, with Kathleen at 15 victories apiece. Uh, this is probably a formality going through today's card for Rohan Crichton, although Safi does have three horses entered and Antonio has five runners on the card. But I'll tell you, Ronnie, there's just been no letdown on everybody on this list, but especially Rohan Crichton, who, when the pressure was on yesterday, walked away with a, uh, a training double on Friday afternoon. Yeah, and he needed because they were getting cat 
trying to catch him uh, very well. So uh, uh, Rowan Crichton with those two wins, 19. So we'll see how this day plays out. And they're involved in all the uh, Rainbow Six and late five situations. Definitely. And speaking of uh, a pick five, the early early sequence gets underway at about 1240 Eastern in a, a solid field. And, and really, I, I'd say uh, an overwhelming theme or current that is going to be omnipresent in races like a, a two-year-old maiden turf special weight like the one we have in the first, where you've got some locals against uh, at least, if not two, there could be more than two interesting out-of-town shippers, including the nine stand with Mo. I, I played it pretty safe in the first, uh, just using the, the three favorites, and I would imagine in a couple of seconds, Ronnie and I are going to talk about the one, eight, and nine in the first race. Uh, two chalks for me in the second with Spear Gun. And, and Kathleen's horse, the sixth time, won't let me go. I really like the two I get it in the third race. Um, that is a, a solid allowance race for two-year-old fillies. She's been very good on the turf, and she, I mean, she just blew the doors off the Colts last time. I mean, eviscerated that field of males she faced on October 18th, and I, I think she's a reliable favorite. A pretty solid two-year-old maiden special weight on the main track in the fourth race. Give a look to the sixth Toscanito. That Colt is the only non-first-time starter in the race, and he was he was bet first out against Breeze on by, who was a big three to five favorite back in, uh, in uh, on July 12th in the middle of July. I, I think he's going to run a lot better today, and I'm five nine eleven wrapping this thing up for eighteen dollars. Three horses in the back end, three horses to start, and among the three horses, Ronnie, I included the nine stand with Mo and the eight Golovkin who break right next to each other and both have excellent barns with Carlos David sending out your horse Golovkin who is the local in the race. Then you've got the nine stand with Mo for Kristoff. I, I just got to think with that pedigree, an Uncle Mo Dowry and being a Kristoff second time starter, maybe also liking the, the uh, competition a little more to this field to his liking compared to that first race at Belmont back on October 10th. I got to think he takes a step forward today, and I'm anticipating just a better, stronger effort out of the nine stand with Mo. but I respect the eight Golovkin, who you can talk about, and we both have the rail horse, King Uhtred, in the mix for Brendan Walsh. Yeah, that horse ridden today by Marcos Menezes. Golovkin is uh, going back to the turf after following a pair of promising races going a mile. That was across San Agustin Park. Would have prompted fade uh, going seven on that sealed sloppy track. It's Carlos David. I like the, uh, this horse going back to the main track. I mean to the turf course, excuse me, this afternoon. Getting back to the number nine stand with where I found the stat on Christophe Clement with his two-year-olds making their second start on the turf. Of course, this is overall all around the country. 29 for 156, a really good 19%. Hard to do that. 56% in the money. 126 is the return of investment. You're just expecting that horse to run exceptionally well today. And the one, uh, you know, Brendan Walsh, who we both like. I think that horse has a chance to run well after running at Kentucky Downs. Right, after Keeneland Ellis and then Kentucky right. Downs. And, you know, just referencing that Kentucky Downs race, which is his strongest performance to date. You know, much like Kristoff's horse, I'd like to imagine you're just dealing with a cult who is improving with each race day experience. And I did note that Catman, who was the runner-up in that race at Kentucky Downs on September 12th, did return to win the Laurel Futurity for Mike Maker on that Preakness undercard. So that might be a, a live race he's coming out of. In fact, I think it is uh, from, a, from a couple of months ago. Uh, to the main we go. We do have a number of races on the dirt today, and race two obviously is no exception with this two-year-old twenty-five to $20,000 claiming race. And you and I both liking the uh, cold 4-6 exacta with the two favorites in this spot. And uh, here's, here's Spear Gun last time out. Pace in this race compared to this, this, this effort in the slop we're looking at back on October 21st, he might have to raid a little bit and lay, lay up close. I don't know if he's going to be able to make the lead and dictate the terms as he did in this, this sloppy track blowout win at 4-5. to five. Looking at the likes of the two competitive hero and even the five King Tarzan, who are both pretty, pretty fast in their own right, and KO's horse is fast as well. But I like the confidence boost getting this horse a win last time out. And for me, Ronnie, I guess at the end of the day, aside from Ralph and Amisael, he's just, in my mind, properly spotted first time stepping up and, and trying winners here. 
Yeah, you saw that nice performance on that seal sloppy track. The sixth time won't let me go is another stepping up to face these open claimers after shifting into overdrive last time out for Kathleen. Defeated those 25 maidens going six and a half furlongs. You're getting Edgar Zayas in the saddle today. And King Tarzan just that's got some speed for Dave Braddy. Edgar Prado in the saddle today. He dueled last time out and faded, getting the drop. He was against 50 starter allowance runners last time. And we were talking, uh, just getting mic'd up before the show started. Uh, the number of future Hall of Fame riders that first cut their teeth and and uh, entered basically the game in the, in the United States in this country right here at GPW slash called the race course and Edgar in that in that department I mean he's he's near the top along with guys like Javier Castellano and Jorge Chavez yeah and Alex Solis comes to mind too who had just a fantastic career so uh, a lot of guys started at the, right here at the Gulfstream Park West the former Calder uh, but uh, that's uh, in the past right now let's move on to race number three back on the turf mile to 16 two-year-old Phillies I like this race a lot actually and this might be my favorite favorite affair on the program today and um, I happen to think, although you took the, the X Factor horse hands down, I mean, you have got the, the wild card and the five agog on top. And I'll, uh, I'm curious to hear your thoughts on her because I, I don't particularly care for her in a few seconds. I think the locals, for me anyway, the locals are pretty good in this race. Led off by the two, I get it, who's going to be favored in this spot. And she's going to be favored having gotten her act together in a big way. And that culminated with a big win last time out. And I think... You know, my takeaway from this race we're about to show off the quarter pole from October 18th, I guess it's twofold. Not only was she pairing up consecutive wins by open lengths, she also won here on this turf course at Gulfstream Park West. And for me, the kicker is this wasn't close. I mean, with her quarter mile run and as she puts on the afterburners here from the eighth pole to the finish line, there were some, some okay two-year-old Colts and Geldings in her wake, including Castle King, and Fulmini, who have both been in their respective careers, they've both been stake place two-year-olds. I, I love the way she buried that field of Colts last time out, and I'm going to take her in this spot. I'm curious I'm curious what you have to say about the five agog in this race as she ships in from out of town, uh, coming out of a distant third at Keeneland in a stake race. Yeah, she's uh, now in the John Arnett Bond. This is a $225,000 daughter of more than ready. Debuts locally showed promise sprinting on the grass at, on the Kentucky circuit, which includes that horse, the race you were mentioning, uh, third place finish in the $150,000 Indian summer at Keeneland. Uh, Paco Lopez handles this horse's first journey around two turns. Uh, just going back to yesterday, two front-running winners on the turf course. Uh, maybe Paco goes to the front, stretching out today, and steals this race. I get it for the reasons you just mentioned and shown, and then happy constitution for me. So I'm taking a bit of a shot with this five agog. Maybe this one is going to be the pace in the race with Paco. In so, so you like her to wire, yeah, essentially, yeah. which, I mean, uh, she's probably going to get the lead in this race. Maybe. I guess my, my two questions with her uh does she want to go this far i also think i happen to think the the horses we're familiar with can run a little bit obviously led by the uh, ron ron spatz philly who i picked and um, i'm anxious to see i mean clearly this is a, a high percentage out of town barn but the first and i'm not familiar with this barn but uh the first starter on this circuit gulfstream and gulfstream park west included over the last five years we shall see what the speedy philly by more than ready does i think happy constitution may like the turf as well she's got an older sibling by loa de zanamo who's uh, done some good things in fact four for five on the turf that's the three happy constitution uh we'll stay with the two-year-old jet a, a nice segue without a doubt into the fourth before we take our little time out on the main here at six and a half furlongs. We've got a group of two-year-old Colts and Geldings here and uh, and a field uh, very much dominated by first-time starters. There are, by my count, you've got uh, a handful of firsters and the only horse with experience happens to be the six Toscanito. First things first, though, let's let's mention your top pick in Rabdan, who's actually one of two firsters in the race from the rail and stall two for Gustavo Delgado. I mean, how about the big horse uh, Bodie Express bait breaking through yesterday in the grade one Clark for uh, Mr. Gustavo. Unbelievable. That horse had been chasing him for years and he gets it done yesterday. I think he paid 50 bucks or something like that. Uh, so 25. 25 bucks. Yeah, so I, I knew he paid something like that. But what a great performance. He got a 102 buy. I saw it somewhere on Twitter. So it was a good performance. But I did go with the number two 
two, Rab Dan, who's the son of Spitzer, uh, debuting for Gustavo. And I found the stat with Gustavo. With his two-year-old first-time starters on the dirt, he's five for 28, 18%, 50% in the money. 450 is the return of investment in there. Uh, Toscanito, as you mentioned, an interesting horse uh, for the trouble he had last time out. So uh, I'm going to try and go with the first-time starter in this spot. And you would think Bodie Express, I mean, more than punched his ticket to the Pegasus World Cup dirt on January 23rd, and it sounds like the connections do want to run there, and why not? He likes it here at Gulfstream. This is his home base, and uh, was very happy for Gustavo and Bodie Express and that entire team getting the win at 11-1 in yesterday's Grade 1 Clark, and Gustavo with the 1-2 punch in the fourth. There's a Saffy Furster in the race, the 5 Maxim moment, who brought decent money as a hard-spun cult. Dam's a little up there. She's 19 years old, and she never raced. Uh, there are five older winning siblings in the family, including a grade one winner in Smooth Roller, and then Toscanito, who you have in second, I picked on top, and I wanted to go back. I know this race was a while ago in, in mid-July, but I wanted to take a couple looks at the start, and it was a, a very difficult break for this gray who seemed to brush along the side of the starting gate, and he was also cut off when the horse to his inside and outside both basically broke inward and outward and he got squeezed out at the break that start pretty much did him in and needless to say it didn't help matters that he was running against what turned out to be the best two-year-old best two-year-old of 2020 on this circuit and breeze on by what about the work tab Lay off the side. What about the work tab with him coming back today? He is just burning up the track in preparation for this. He, he just has bullet after bullet. He had trouble at the start. He just saw it. And he really never got in track in the race behind Breeze on by, as we mentioned, went on to be a multiple stakes winner. You're getting Paco Lopez, Antonio Sano. Maybe he's got eyes on that uh, uh, training title this afternoon. So Tuscanito, for all those reasons, maximum moment two with the $175,000 son of hard spun for Sappy. So, uh, 10 morning workouts on that horse. Who's based over at Gulfstream Park as we take a little breather here. More chatter about opening day at the big GP by the sea after this here on Gulfstream West today. Nice day here in Miami Gardens on this final day number 39 of 39 at Gulfstream Park West. Looking out again, fast and firm conditions, and we'll transition from that outside tower shot to the respective studios, and for good reason. The timing works, Ronnie. We've got a mandatory cash out in the Rainbow Six and the late pick five, for that matter, a sequence that begins in earnest in the fifth, and how is your ticket looking this afternoon? Well, $97.20 for me, and I'm too deep in race number five with Donji and Keep Quiet, and I got lots of coverage all the way down. If you were on Twitter, Jason and I went through this card uh, yesterday. That's Rainbow Six, I should say. Yesterday, a tough sequence, so I stepped it up, Jason. 97.20 for me. Now, I'm taking a shot, too, and we did have a pretty big scratch uh, later on down the line. I think it was race number eight. I lost my top pick in the four, include the Beast. I still have some breathing room there and rock with Robin is the horse they're gonna have to get around uh, but a pretty tricky sequence and I think for me the one real linchpin and an item that kept coming up in my mind I don't know if you have in fact I don't think there is like a traditional lean on horse or single it's just not that kind of sequence where there is a stone cold three to five shot that you're pretty confident in and uh, I'm gonna go five nine eleven in this opening race to start fully admitting however that they're gonna have to get around the nine Donji I mean he's on the cusp and verge of his nine-year-old birthday 
He's been quite good for the last two barns that have had him and trainers and Elizabeth Dobles and currently Bob DeBona. And I would imagine, although he has not run since the tail end of September, the fact that he doesn't have to run against Sharmel Shake or Morning Stride in this spot for the 12-5, he's going to like that this afternoon. Well, he was claimed for 12-5 during July. Now he's dropping back to that level today and into the stated claim. He hit the board in three of four races against better uh, going to, before going to the sidelines to get that R&R &R in September. And Bobby DeBona, Hector Berrios named to ride. Uh, I mean, you say, well, why the big drop? The drop is because they claimed him for 12-5. Looks like they're looking for a win. And keep quiet. And this, uh, talking about the Rainbow Six, I went too deep in here, and I'm afraid that I didn't use enough in here. That's how tough the Rainbow Six sequence is. Yeah, no, I think Basha is in with the chance, to say the least. I mean, obviously, I picked him on top. I, I clearly respect Anji, and he is, a, he is a deserving favorite, without a doubt. Uh, Safi's horse, and Safi's got two in the mix. His 11, keep quiet. There were three inside scratches, MTOs, so he's got stall eight now, not nearly as daunting as, as post number 11 on paper. That's a positive with him. Bosch has done some good things in the past, despite being a little camera shy at one for his last 20, but he legitimately broke poorly last time out and just didn't have a great trip a week and a half ago for Jenna. And does the four ice T maybe wake up and get back to one? You know what? He's probably not going to run one of his best races. I think that ship has sailed with him. But, I mean, it wasn't all that long ago for 12-5. He would have been favored here. Yeah, so, I mean, that's uh, what we're saying about the Rainbow Six. You know, there's a couple of ways you can go. Basha, by the way, today ridden by Victor LeBron. Yeah, we hope Angel Arroyo's doing okay as we move on to race number six, which is a 10K Philly Mayor Claimer on the dirt at seven furlongs. few different rematches are going on in this race, and, and clearly the, 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 the biggest one or biggest contingent is that that call me senorita race i i don't love that race and i get options might be a little limited in this spot and i just for me anyway had a hard time going back to the one madam moon i want to ask you ronnie she lost last time out at one to five she's still a major player here and probably going to be favored again what makes you go back to her and picking her on top after not winning at 30 cents last time. Well, I like to turn back to seven furlongs after debuting locally and finishing that stock to pace fourth against this, uh, you know, level of competition. That was that two-turn mile. Uh, Victor Barbosa is really sharp with horses going route to sprint. He's like 27%. And that's what I thought uh, maybe with the turn back that Madame Moon would run well today. Captured like Queen Latiza, ridden by MC Al Jaramillo today. I, I thought those were the logical three. But the three horse that you have on top, uh, that horse uh, had some trouble in it. Last race, right? Uh, well, uh, off a little slow. Yeah. She's more of a closer. Trouble's right. probably the wrong word, right. but I wanted to show it was a good race, though. And I think for this level, I think you're, for me anyway, having her fourth, I think you're a little too hard on her. I yeah. really think Legata Negro personally, and she's the inside horse there. You can see her a little sluggish from the gate. I, I think she's going to like this field a lot this afternoon, despite being 0 for 11. And here, here she is cranking up with that, that four to five wide sweep off the far turn. Couple of things, the first of which, and I, I, for me anyway, is the biggest positive. She's not coming out of that Call Me Senorita race with Captured Light and Madam Moon, which I just, I don't like that race, or at least I'm not bullish on it. Um, secondly, I mean, her races, despite the fact she's such a plotter, her last two races here at GPW going this distance from a figure standpoint, they've been pretty strong efforts. I think she's going to like this field a lot, and... Uh, and I think Legata Negra is really going to run well. I really do in the sixth race. Uh, we'll move on to the seventh here. We're back on the turf at a mile and a furlong. So they break way down at the tail end of that, that infield shoot. Uh, it's kind of a neat race to watch the uh, the start of. And uh, you and I, for the most part, I see a, a one and four, a little bit of red and yellow. I, I like the rail. I like Yachty. I like his recent form. And I gave him the nod on top just because he's been pretty sharp of late. And this is the kind of field... If you're in good form, I'm going to put a premium on that. Yeah, I mean, I got him on. He was beating the nose at this level on the Gulf Stream turf course. Uh, during September, goes back to the grass, stretches out to nine furlongs. That's the unknown. Rallied to finish third and second, respectively, in the local pair uh, on the slot. But I did go with Robin Team Show, who's dropping to the 12-5 level today and returning to what appears to be his best surface with the four races in two seconds. Pair of clunkers on the main track. Uh, Antonio Sano, Edgar Zayas atop, but a little bit of a shaky proposition in there. And that's why I also threw the 
free and uh, pretendant. There's a, a previous winner on the turf. He's got returned to the grass. He finished that rallying second here in that race, moved from the lawn to a mile in the 16th. You're going to get MCL Jaramillo in the saddle today, and Joe Bravo is going to run that 13 that's getting in off the AE list. Last dirt race forever here at Gulf West goes in the eighth. Two-year-old Phillies on the main in the 16K claiming. A claiming event, you've got that early scratch, and outside of MTOs and also eligibles, like in-body scratches, I think we have the biggest affection on the entire card, certainly in the rainbow on this getaway day in the form of the four include the beast. You're looking with, with her absence an even shorter price on Rock with Robin, who seemed to run better off the claim. She was good. Despite not winning, she ran fine and fired the fastest race of her career last time out off the claim for Carlos David. And when I drew the race up, you know, looks like she's going to have the bullseye on her back. She is in all likelihood the speed of the speed, and they, they're going to have to go and, and wear her down and catch her. Well, she's, she was claimed for $16,000 by Carlos David back in August. Now drops to this 16 level. First start, as you mentioned, set the pace against those 32 starter optional allowance run, uh, starter allowance run, excuse me, going five and a half. Uh, I think she's the one to beat, especially with the scratch of the four, include the beast who I had in second. And I bumped up Hope Lady into the top spot, who's dropping to this level after following her late closing uh, maiden victory. She comes, she doesn't run that well, but it's Safi, it's Edgar. I had to give this horse another shot. All turf double begins uh, fairly late in the program. In fact, getting down to the nitty gritty here with Saturday's ninth on the turf going a mile. A uh, very interesting race. A number of shippers and your long shot, in fact, is housed in this one for Tim Hills, who I like coincidentally in the 10th race, which we'll talk about in a few seconds here. What's this? What's the deal with Honey Doan, who I got to admit, Jersey form is OK with a horse that has early speed. Yeah, making his uh, local uh, uh, return to first start. He had split a pair of next out winners last time out when finishing second against those 12 5 claimers. And you're absolutely right. These horses that have been shipping down from the turf of course in Monmouth Park have been running very well. Timmy Hills and I believe Joe Bravo might be four for four at the meter or something like that. Really? Since he arrived. Some, some around there. He's run, run very well. Or, you know, I'm not p positive about that. So I just thought this was a shot to take in here. I thought projected originally you have on top was the one to beat for Carl. Carlos David, but I, I'm looking for a little bit of a price, uh, you know, in my Rainbow what Six. What price is that horse, actually, uh, I don't on the even, I line. think he, I was hoping he was, oh, he's only 9-2. to two. I thought he'd be higher than that, so he's 9-2 to two on the board. You've got McKagan also coming in from Jersey, old war horse for Kelly Breen. He's lost the step, but he still has that competitive fire. I think he's a dangerous horse for uh, Mike Napoli, Kelly Breen, and Edgar Zayas, and, and uh, Carlos David throws out, again, a pretty, pretty strong one-two punch, obviously led by my top pick and your runner-up, the uh, 11 projected. And he saw fit to reclaim the uh, another old war horse in this race in the five, my point exactly. Very interesting uh, ninth race, without a doubt. And we'll wrap up the meet here at, at Gulfstream West at seven and a half furlongs on the turf. Race number 10 is a sixteen dollars to $14,000 claimer. Uh, boxing up, for the most part, one, three, and seven. Those seem to be uh, fairly popular numbers down there. And uh, I'm looking. We'll see how your your uh, your nine to two shot does for uh, Tim Hills in the ninth. I'm back with the barn. New face here on the rail and the one on duty who's in for the 16,000. You're a couple of stalls out. We'd love to see Joe Orsino get the win here with the three call bros and Paco. Yeah, definitely with Paco Lopez and Caramojo uh, for Kelsey Dana, ridden today by Edgar Zayas. So I, I had that horse on top of my ticket. All right, as we turn the reins over, the track announcer Gabe Pruitt is coming up on this final day here at Gulfstream Park West. <laughs> 